Welcome to Sustainable Farm Insights, a sustainability programme brought to you by the Irish Farmers Journal and Lambia Ireland. The economic and environmental challenges facing Irish farmers is well known and the aim of this programme is to help tackle these challenges and assist Irish farmers across all enterprises to adopt good management practices and new technologies as they drive to deliver economic and environmental sustainability on their farm. My name is Andy Doyle from the Irish Farmers Journal. Uh, we're here looking at soil health on the farm of Shane O'Loughlin. This is part of the Sustainable Farm Insights programme operated by the Farmers Journal and Lambia Ireland. And I'm joined in that conversation by David Wall of Chogosk, Johnstown Castle, and David Coney of Glambia. Shane, what type of farming do you carry out here in South Kildare? So we're, we're growing on the farm, we're growing um, 14 and a half tonnes of grass, that's what we're growing this year. We had a, a drought last May, which sort of hindered things a bit. Um, the, the cows would be a sort of British Friesian Holstein cow. Um, the fertility would have been, would have been, I think we'd, we'd 9% or so empty last year, um, this year gone by. And um, I suppose where we are, we've, we owned um, 140 acres and then we're renting another around 350 acres. And it'd be also where we are in, in Kildare, it mainly, it'd be in the middle of horse country and there'd be a lot of stud farms around us. And, we're, um, I suppose, we're renting about five different farms around us, and uh, we um, we've used that. Some of it we use for silage, some of it for grazing cows, and some of it for grazing replacements. Are you stocked heavy then overall across that? I well, mean, 340 acres, 200 cows. Yeah, yeah. I suppose on, on the grazing, on the grazing, um, the, like the grazing platform, we'd be stocked at around uh, three cows to the hectare, and then over the whole farm, we'd be down to around 2.1, 2.2. You know, so that, that's helping you to be able to kind of mine the soil beneath your feet, beneath their feet, so to speak. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and um, I suppose like we'd, we'd be conscious of the environment, the way things are going, and we're trying to sort of, any new practice coming out, we're trying to adopt as in like with trail and chew for spreading slurry or dribble bar, using protected urea or, you know, whatever, whatever's coming on stream and can help. So you are we're, using those, Shane? We're using those and we're oh. open to trying to use whatever will help and, and, you know, just to, we, we use protected urea this year and we, we, we use it in the spring and in the back end and we've got a great response of it in, in the back end of the year. You know? So you're predominantly slurry, I'm, I'm guessing then, based on the number of cows, etc.? We would, I'd like it to be, to be, we, we'd be spreading slurry, I suppose, it'd be all contractor, but it'd be, it'd be spread with the trail and chew or dribble bar. And, and are you moving that around the farm or kind we, of loading we, it close to the farm? We would, well, in, in, the, in the springtime, um, you'd have 60 days in the first rotation. So every paddock grazed, you'd be doing your best to get slurry out on ground conditions allowing. And then in, in the back end of the year as well, like in the middle of the season when you're grazing every 18 to 21 days, you can't really spread there. We tried it even with the trail and chew, but it, it's, it's just, it, it's not ideal. But at the start of the year and, and the, the back end of the year, it, it's, it's great to get it out and you, you have plenty of time for it to get into the soil, you know. Okay, and do you have any dung in, this, in the system? We do, well, the, what we do with the dung is we've, uh, we've, I suppose we would have had issues with compaction and different things and I suppose from we tried like using aerators you know to, to the spikes to tear up to, to, to sort of to loosen up the soil but um, I was on a, a call there last year with the, with the Monte Farm programme and uh, well two years ago and uh, the fellow was saying if the more dung you use the better it is for the worms in the soil and the worms are a lot better for loosening up the soil than any aeration that you'll do with, with mechanical uh, you know intervention so that's what we've done and we we found it it seems to be working well and the the, the fella that spreads the, the dung it um it chops it real fine we wouldn't go out too heavy on the, on the ground like we'd we'd try to spread it um you know um after the last round sort of from the first of october until the deadline you spread as much as we can on paddocks and it, see, it seems to work and then a lot on silage ground or seeded ground you know but it, it seemed to be great for the to get the to say that if you spread a, a field Worms will come in from the next field. It's like a gold to them, you know. So it's, it's a. And you feel you're seeing a benefit across your well, land it seems, well, where you, know, you can put the dung. Land specifically. that can sort of aerate the soil and sort up, it can only benefit, you know. That's what we'd be thinking anyway, you know. Okay. You know? Okay. Well, I'm going to take that question then and move it over to David Wall. David, we're talking there about putting on organic matter in quantities, well, big or small, depending on what you have to try and aerate the soil. Is that actually what's happening? So Andy, you're, you're, to answer your question, um, in terms of having that dung and that manure out there, that's going to help us 
to build resilience into the soil in terms of with the cows uh, grazing the paddock and uh, we'll say at a higher stocking rate on the grazing platform there needs to be resilience because under that compression when the cow's hooves go into that paddock that dung or that manure acts as a kind of a shock absorber between the mineral matter so the sand silt and clay in that in that soil it also then creates uh, um, an environment for the soil biology so those earthworms to come up to get that food that that manure that carbon and they leave behind them then more pore space for the water to get through and for the plants like Shane has grown a big amount of grass here so uh, it takes a, a big volume of soil to feed that type of a, a yield and that's where the dung can help in terms of nutrients but also in terms of resilience and, and standing up to that system. And that physical structure is also helping to provide pore space for the roots to grow which is part of the reason why you can get the big yields because if this soil tightens up on us which can happen for all kinds of reasons not least just the density of grazing animals if it tightens up it's slowing down water percolation and it's more importantly slowing down root growth. No, exactly. And, and I, I suppose the bigger volume that you can explore, so once we close up that soil and it's really tight, now we have less of the soil that we can explore with the roots, but also, as you say, in terms of air passing in, we have to remember that uh, on a dairy farm, uh, you're trying to get out early, cows are calving. So for that soil to warm up and to begin to produce grass, we need it that it's open enough for the warmer air that begins to come on those good days in spring to get in there. If that's closed up or if it's full of water, air can't get in, so it's slower to warm up and slower then to produce grass to feed that grazing herd as it calves down. So what exactly then is the dung that's, that Shane spoke about doing in terms of opening up the soil? It's, it's obviously triggering nature. Yes, yes, and, and, and I suppose that's it in a nutshell. Uh, it's doing multiple things uh, in terms of the three aspects of soil health that we're, we're interested in. So that physical, it's creating the resilience between the soil particles that, yes, when the bit of weight or bit of pressure goes over it, that it, it can compress under it, but then spring back out. That's the sponge, the sponge like analogy. The sponge, like yeah. the sponge. Yeah. In terms of the chemical health, what it's doing is it's a store of nutrients in itself, number one but also then it helps to condition those other nutrients through the final leg, through biology, chewing up on that organic matter and manure and recycling those nutrients back in and then also re-releasing other nutrients that are stored in soil organic matter. So it's, it's probably a, a key component in terms of the business, in terms of the soil, getting that organic matter in there is fundamental and also then you also have the added benefits in terms of the environment, climate change. So let's take a look at what's, what's happening under yep. your feet, or under the cow's feet more specifically. So I'm going to dig this first one here. I see there's, there's a little bit of a divot there from, 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 from the cows going through, and you know, which is, is normal in any, any uh, livestock system, livestock farm. And we're just going to take out a, um, a small amount here and just see what's see what's in here okay so in terms of 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 the the soil overall it's looking pretty good and um, there is some evidence up here if 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 you can see uh, this bit up here in the surface it's only probably three four inches deep seems to be a lot more solid and if i peel that away it's, it's coming away, away as one block yeah. so it's a little bit of akin to we'll say in in, in other soils people might call it a pan or a, a, a block but you can see that top block is largely a, an entity of its own and it's not fully linked in terms of the root system with the soil underneath it so the roots are actually being impeded a little bit on, underneath there we don't have as many roots down here in this although really good structure and that um, this this soil up here and and if I if I just drop down that bit for a minute and we we try to break this open now so again there is some good roots 
they're not going maybe as deep as we would like, especially in terms of if, if I've picked a, a, an area here where there was a divot or where there was a, 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 a cow hoof mark, it's probably not the same, Shane, you're, you're saying that you're, you're growing 15 tonnes of, of, of grass. So it can't be the same everywhere, but this is, a, I suppose, a little bit of a, an early warning sign. Um, the other thing here is we can put that, like a jigsaw, back together in the soil that probably has a, a, a good soil structure that shouldn't be the case. So again, just an early warning in terms of the, the system that there is a little bit of, of I suppose, a compacted layer. It's not that deep. So again, it's easily to remedy. And I think Andy, uh, going back to your last question, where you talk about the organic manure, organic manure can help us to remedy this problem. One of the things that I recall we saw on a different farm when we were in a permanent pasture is that you physically could not tear that sod apart with your hands, you had to cut it yeah. because of the density of roots yeah. and that same density of roots is the links in the spot, it's the reinforcing in the soil against the cows walking or the machines coming in or whatever. Yeah, yeah and, and I think uh, that's, that's it in a nutshell, there's less of this, this soil, although not too bad, there's less of this soil is explored with roots yeah. So therefore, the, the, the amount of soil that's there to feed the crop is less, just because there's a little bit of compaction in the top. However, I do see here beside me, there, there's actually an old um, dung pat, and we might just have a look to see if there's a difference in there, just for a Because the dung pat, as you're digging it, is the equivalent of Shane spreading dung. It's a lump of stuff rather than a light film of stuff, which we're getting with slurry. Yeah, and, and it's, it's exactly that. Obviously, it's, it's, it's more fibrous than a, a, a small filament of slurry that would go over the ground. Uh, this is a concentrated carbon source. It's like free lunch here together. And uh, what usually happens there is the earthworms will move to that, akin to the dung, and hopefully, uh, well, we'll see what the soil structure is like. And of course, as I would always say, if they find a feast, because they're because they contain both the male and the female parts, their instant reaction is to multiply. So you might have had one arrive, but you could have 10 in, in, in a short space of time. And you can see here straight away, we don't have that same uh, issue in the surface. The soil so is breaking up in your hands, obviously. The soil is breaking up. It's extremely friable here. This is the bottom bit. This is the top bit. And again, if we look in here, it's coming, coming apart much different. So much more crumbly. Um, uh, great structure and also uh, there is evidence there in terms of earthworms in here uh, etc so they're doing exactly what we what 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 it says on the tin they're moving to the food um, and with that they're improving the structure and you can see here they're curled up I suppose it's a it's a cold day today but there's plenty of actually earthworm eggs in here as well that's where that little bit of farmyard manure or dung that's on, a, on a, a farm can be really precious to put where there's a, a, a risk, we'll say, in a headland area, especially in, in maybe around a gateway or, or, or wherever else, or an area that's trafficked more frequently, and really get that working for you rather than just putting it out in the middle of the field. Okay, I'm going to move over to David Cooney and I'm going to ask David, we saw over the last, oh, well, I suppose a lot of this decade, We've seen about 60,000 hectares migrate from a, a, a continuous tillage scenario into grass and generally into dairying. And some of that land has been very difficult to get into a kind of a state that looks like what's beneath our feet here. Could you explain to us what has, what's been going on and why people are having this difficulty getting t worn tillage ground into good grassland. Andy, to answer your question there, that comes back to what we've just spoke about here, and it's back to the, the physical structure of the soil and the organic matter of the soil. As we both know, in a lot of continuous tillage soils, they have seen little or none organic matter, and this has had an impact on the, on the physical structure of the soil. So when that sod or that field is laid down into grass, them same problems still persist, and we don't have that structure that David was talking about there to, to produce the kind of yields that Shane wants or, or that, that a dairy farmer expects out of these soils. 
I think, David, one of the things that kind of I, I would always say to people, and we, we forget very often, is that the fertility supply to a, a grass soil is generally from three sources. The fertilizer bag that we're all familiar with, the slurry that is an inevitable part of those systems, but the soil itself is the third phase. And in a situation where we have so little organic matter in the soil because it's been broken down with continuous tillage over the years, the soil is not given that little bit extra, which is critical in the spring, critical in the autumn. And I think that's why it's so slow. And it's, it's just, it's almost as if we have to rebuild the system to prime it again from scratch. Is that broadly, you think, what's happening? Absolutely, and it's, it's back to that soil organic matter that's feeding that soil biology that, that, that in itself is returning to the soils. And as that soil organic matter and the structure was depleted, the soil biology was also depleted. And unfortunately, there is no quick turnaround to that. It is, it is a, a probably a long-term thing that you need to start improving all aspects of the soil. So that's the fertility, the structure, the biology to get it to produce the, the yields that we, that we need from it. So that's all three legs of the stool. Absolutely. That, that soil science stool yeah. that we talked about. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, probably some of that needs to happen before that field even goes into grass, you know, and ideally that's the way it should happen, that you start feeding that organic matter in, you know, into the structure of the soil so that when you do put it, when you do lay it down there, you're, that process has started. Gentlemen, Shane, David, David, thank you very much. The summary of a healthy soil is that we have the physical, which is the structure, the chemical, which is the fertility, and the biological, which we measure by earthworm activity. When all of those are working well, then the seat on that stool is providing the ecosystem services, which do so much for us. I think it is very important for all farmers to remember that when that soil is healthy, when it's humming, when we're getting those roots growing down through the profile deep into the ground, we're depositing carbon down there. We have roots that can grow more easily. When they grow more easily, the crops above produce more yield. And at the end of the day, the major beneficiary, uh, well, there are two beneficiaries. One is the farmer, because more yield generally is more profit. And the second one is the, is the environment, because we're protecting so many of the ills that we've been talking about for the past number of years now. Thank you for taking the time to watch. <laughs>